Hello people, in this video let us look at the clinical features of heart failure. Okay, all the clinical features of heart failure we will look at. So far we have looked at what heart failure is. We have looked at the causes of heart failure. We have looked at progressive heart failure. We have looked at the mechanism of heart failure. Right, we have looked at Frank Sterling law. And we have looked at con uh, in old people what exactly happens. Acute, chronic, uh, why it happens. So now let us come to the clinical features. Okay. So clinical features, suddenly if somebody's heart fails, what will happen? They'll have sudden onset dyspnea, very good. They can't breathe. <coughs> Why this will happen? Because of sudden pulmonary edema. Because the heart is not able to pump, right? So the heart failure, so the lung is not able to return blood. So there's pulmonary edema. So he'll have sudden onset dyspnea. Dyspnea means difficulty in breathing. Acute respiratory distress, suddenly he will start but having respiratory distress. Orthopnea means positional. He cannot sleep. He cannot sleep, right? Prostration. Prostration means what? He will bend down, right? So there is... Um, why does this acute heart failure happens? Because of acute MI, etc. So the patient will be agitated, pale, clammy. Okay, so his uh, peripheries are cool to touch. So if you touch his uh, hands, palms and soles, it will be cool to touch. Right, the pulse is rapid. How will the pulse be rapid? Because there is a heart failure. So heart is not able to pump. So blood pressure will be probably hyper hypotension. So to make up for that, there is tachycardia. Pulse is rapid. But in some cases, there can be inappropriate, sorry, inappropriate bradycardia that may contribute to the acute episode of heart failure. The blood pressure is usually high because of SNS activation, that is sympathetic nervous system activation, but may be normal or low if the patient is in cardiogenic shock. So if the patient is in cardiogenic shock, there can be hypotension. So everything here, they are not at all sure. They are saying it can be bradycardia or tachycardia. It can be low BP or high BP. All this, they are, they are not sure. But this, they are very sure. There will be respiratory distress, dyspnea, sudden, suddenly he is not able to breathe. Okay. This and his peripheries are very cool to touch, pale, clammy, clammy. And uh, cool, uh, what do you say this cold and clammy always you use, right? This word. And why does it happen? Let us say because of acute myocardial infarction. Look at the continued features of this acute heart failure. The jugular venous pulse is usually elevated. Very important for you to note this. You'll make the patient sleep at what 45 degree angle and you will check. And right neck, right? Right lateral neck, you will check that uh, there is raised JVP, jugular venous pressure will be more. So what and all they said will happen in acute, acute only we are looking at, um, there will be pulmonary edema, so dyspnea, he is having that respiratory distress, pale, cold, clammy uh, extremities he will have, he will have uh, orthopnea, prostration, cool to touch, rapid pulse he can have or inappropriate, inappropriate bradycardia and uh, jugular venous pulse is raised, we told you, then there could be a gallop rhythm, okay, with the third heart sound. A new systolic murmur may signify acute mitral regurgitation or ventral septal rupture. Ventricular septal rupture, you can imagine. So all these are acute conditions. That's what you should understand. So what are the condition, uh, causes of acute heart failure? Myocardial infarction, acute mitral regurgitation, ventral sep ventricular septal rupture, you can say. These people will have pulmonary edema, acute. So they have crepitation of lung base. If it's so severe, they'll have crepitations all over the lung. Okay. Or it could be an acute on a chronic failure. That means some chronic condition they have on that there is an acute uh, uh, heart failure. That is because of some infection or they did not take their diuretic uh, medication properly, uh, etc. You will have to find out what the potential cause is for this acute on chronic heart failure. Okay. So acute heart failure, we have told you the features. So we have updated the causes of acute heart failure here. Just remember chronic valvular heart disease, etc. There will be compensatory change. Acute on chronic heart failure can become, can be because of MI infection. Then what else did they say? Some diuretic medication they didn't take properly. Right? Or they have some, uh, uh, they, somebody gave them IV fluids, imagine. And their heart will not be able to take, a, take the load. Right? Or they can have some arrhythmias, etc. So this is what you have to remember. Some trigger will be there for making it acute on chronic. Okay. Now we are done with the clinical features of acute. Now let us go to chronic. See chronic conditions, <clears throat> they'll be having relapses, remitting course, right? So they'll have some periods of stability in the middle. Okay. 
and they'll have decompensation, worsening of symptoms, etc. So they'll try to compensate, there'll be decompensation, there'll be worsening of symptoms, periods of stability. All this they will have, they'll, they will require uh, hospitalization, okay. So what will happen, these people will have fatigue, uh, poor effort tolerance, peripheries are cold, BP is low. Basically what their body will be trying to do, because there is very little cardiac output, it will send the cardiac output, the blood to the vital organs. So it, the, it will be sending less blood to the skeletal muscle and even to the kidney. So skeletal muscle, no no blood means what will happen, they the, they'll be weak, right? And poor renal perfusion means what? Oliguria, okay. So this is what you should understand. So their vital organs, it will be trying to perfuse the body. This is chronic. So it has learned how to live around this condition. Okay. What happened to the lung then? Pulmonary edema, can it be there? Yes, there can be pulmonary edema. <coughs> so here, what will happen? Same thing, uh, there will be high JVP with hepatic congestion. <clears throat> peripheral edema because of right heart failure so they'll have edema remember okay and um, they they can have weight loss this is called as cardiac cachexia so they can have chronic heart failure can have weight loss uh, cachexia so where will you see cardiac cachexia uh, chronic heart disease what is it weight loss very good this you will see then uh, there'll be uh, anorexia that means they don't have much of appetite and they don't want to eat is it impaired absorption they can have so basically there is poor tissue perfusion right so gastrointestinal talk, uh, tract also is not absorbing much looks like okay and because of immobility and they will have skeletal muscle atrophy gastrointestinal congestion poor tissue perfusion everywhere there will be poor tissue perfusion except for the vital organs this is chronic heart failure basically you should understand that in this condition what and all you saw that there will be um, uh, perfusion to vital organs. So everything else will be suffering like skeletal muscles will be suffering, kidney will be suffering. So pulmonary edema they may have, they may have high JVP, hepatic congestion because of right heart failure, dependent peripheral uh, edema, edema they will have weight loss, cardiac cachexia, gastrointestinal congestion, skeletal muscle atrophy. These are the features of chronic heart failure. They will ask you in the exam. Please remember, if they ask you chronic heart failure, you have to write all this and you have to say, how is it different from acute? In acute, there will be acute onset stuff, right? In acute onset, uh, acute, you will see that uh, there is acute onset. Everything is acute onset. And here, there is nothing much about the kidney they didn't tell, right? They didn't tell much about the skeletal muscles. That and all they didn't say. Because in this chronic, it is uh, learning how to perfuse the vital organs without perfusing the skeletal muscle and the kidney etc and then what else you saw they would have had weight loss <clears throat> acute will you see weight loss no <clears throat> now in chronic they'll have cardiac cachexia they'll not be able to absorb things so they'll have skeletal muscle atrophy because of un uh, disuse okay so uh, heart failure types are there left heart failure right heart failure and biventricular so left heart is more uh, important okay more common so they have written it first okay so in this video what are we trying to look at clinical features so if right heart has failed what will happen the liver is not able to return the blood to the heart so liver hepatomegaly congestion ascites these people having raised gvp so this is these are the symptoms of um, so signs and symptoms of right heart failure what is it right heart failure raised gvp touch your neck uh, liver yes and then what else you saw ascites very good now coming to left heart failure what will happen Come on, left side, uh, if her left side heart has failed, that is left chambers, okay, left chambers have problem. So basically it will affect what? Mainly, immediately it will affect the lungs because lungs are not able to return the blood, right? So pulmonary edema, very important. And then what will happen? Again, raised JVP, they have written pleural effusion, everything to do with the lung, pulmonary edema, pleural effusion, pitting edema, um, they have written here, pitting edema. What is the edema difference between this and this? Right heart, they are saying peripheral pitting edema. Pitting edema is same only. Peripheral only, both have, they have marked peripheral only. So edema is same, okay. It is more in right heart failure, they are saying. The edema is extreme in uh, right heart failure, okay. Okay, this much we understood as clinical features. So clinical features in our uh, mild to moderate heart failure, the symptoms will be like on exertion only. On exertion, these people will have some uh, breathlessness symptoms and all. On, uh, in, uh, what am I saying, uh, severe uh, heart failure, the symptoms will be even at rest. So there is a classification for this, that is NYH, 
in my ha classification of heart disease this is not just heart failure heart disease itself so there is grade 1 um, compromise grade 2 is slightly compromised grade 3 is markedly compromised and grade 4 is severely compromised okay so basically grade 4 even at rest they have discomfort okay so here you can see they are classifying based on the symptoms right this uh, uh, what did i say dyspnea difficulty in breathing breathlessness they have classified based on heart okay so clinical features we are done with so now what are the other things that can happen to these people because of heart failure because of heart failure they can have kidney failure perfusion is not happening what will happen to the body tell correct no people blood itself is not reaching the kidney then you know that uh, liver will get um, congestive uh, liver failure right then impaired liver function they are saying then arrhythmias yes sudden death this much we will write what about thromboembolism deep vein thrombosis low cardiac output will will be there enforced immobility they will have immobility they won't be moving so so they can have deep vein thrombosis etc they can also because of effect of low cardiac output okay look at these three hypokalemia hyperkalemia hyponatremia see they are telling hypokalemia and hyperkalemia so hypokalemia because they gave the patient diuretics as a treatment probably hyperkalemia because of ac inhibitors arbs etc they are saying so if there is a kidney dysfunction etc hyponatremia can be because of two things one is because you will give the person diuretics so the body will throw out the sodium and uh, water will go with it so that you will fix the person one cause is that otherwise because of water retention uh, forget the diuretic parts because these people have water retention that is why they may have hyponatremia okay so that will cause um, dilutional hyponatremia is it so these are all the clinical features guys of um, heart failure sorry yeah heart failure complications clinical features everything we have looked at in this video let's take a recap in this video we wanted to look at the clinical features of heart failure so far uh, in the previous video we have seen what heart failure is and the causes of heart failure uh, progressive heart failure mechanism of heart failure uh, St frank sterling law and uh, acute uh, chronic uh, failures why they happen acute can happen because of mitral uh, sorry myocardial infarction acute mitral regurgitation or ventricular septal rupture okay so basically in acute what the clinical features are this video is specifically about the clinical features so what will be there for these people sudden dyspnea sudden acute pulmonary edema respiratory distress orthopnea prostration they'll be agitated they'll be pale the extremities will be cool to touch they'll be clammy pulse can be rapid or they can have bradycardia either of them or they can have hypotension normal or tension or hypertension either one of them is possible Uh, but if it is cardiogenic shock they'll have they can have normal or hypotension okay but if there is uh, sympathetic activation they can have high bp in acute the jugular venous pressure is elevated because if there is right heart uh, failure then in third heart sound gallop rhythm then you will have uh, if there is uh, acute mitral regurgitation obviously you will have new systolic murmur okay and there could be ventral septal rupture <coughs> look at this see mitral regurgitation will cause systolic murmur say mitral regurgitation mitral 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 re regurgitation 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 systolic murmur pan systolic murmur pan systolic murmur chronic means it will be pan systolic okay okay so you saw new systolic murmur means it could be acute mitral regurgitation okay then see this is s3 right in this they said some gallop rhythm or something right in this one is 3 right a gallop rhythm with third heart sound is heard quite early in the development of acute right side heart failure okay these people can have crepitations in the lung especially the bases but later on if it is very severe they can have crepitations throughout the lung because of pulmonary edema okay and expiratory wheeze would you know what pulmonary edema is guys because there is fluid retention in the lung because it is not able to send the blood to the heart okay then coming to um, uh, this paragraph down here if the patient is having acute on chronic you have to ask them did you take your diuretics properly like that you should ask them and did you have any infection which caused the trigger like that you should ask okay infection did they have you should ask 
did they take their diuretic medication correctly you should ask this is for acute on chronic okay now let us go to the chronic heart failure features okay guys we looked at uh, fatigue listlessness uh, poor effort tolerance peripheries are cold bp is low this they are sure bp is low and what will happen their body will be trying to compensate right so what it will it will always be perfusing the vital organs it will not be perfusing the skeletal muscles and kidney so they'll have uh, fatigue because of skeletal muscles being un perfused and uh, renal uh, not no perfusion so oliguria they can have okay and uremia they'll have more urea in the blood then they'll have pulmonary edema as usual heart failure means pulmonary edema they'll have high uh, jvp in case of right heart failure then uh, they have edema peripheral edema 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 very important this edema peripheral edema they did not tell in acute remember this is very important to remember peripheral edema and then uh, this will be pitting edema right and they can have weight loss uh, because their uh, intestine is not able to absorb anything it's not getting perfused right so they'll have cardiac cachexia cachexia okay and then they can have um, uh, skeletal muscle atrophy these are some things that you do not see in the acute one remember did you see all these in the acute no right we didn't see all this in the acute okay now we're done with chronic so based on uh, left and ha right heart failure what clinical features will be there so raised jvp in uh, right and left raised jvp then in both you will have pitting edema in uh, right you will have hepatomegaly ascites in left you will have pulmonary edema cardiomegaly pleural effusion okay then uh, you saw that in mild to moderate heart failure the system symptoms come only on exercise in uh, severe heart failure symptoms are at rest for this you saw the nyha classification where grade 1 2 3 4 4 4 means even at rest they have uh, problem okay and um, we saw the complications of heart failure they can go into kidney failure they can go into uh, impaired liver function they can go into thromboembolism they can go into arrhythmias they can go into sudden death hypo or hyperkalemia and hyponatremia okay so these are the complications of what heart failure we are done okay with the clinical features in the next video we we'll look at the investigations and the treatment okay of heart failure so how to manage acute how to manage chronic all this we will look at okay so investigations and manic is management will continue in the next video that's all for now guys bye bye